Hey everybody, Fetty here. In this project breakdown, I want to show you how I built the box for my Gentleman Survival Kit. If you haven't seen that video, it's posted on my channel and it might be worthwhile to check that out. There's a lot of details in this box and the construction is a little bit unconventional, so I'm going to try to explain everything I did and show you all those details. I cut pockets for all the little doodads on my CNC machine. And I built dedicated compartments for some of the larger items. The top and bottom of the box are inset with a piece of real copper, which I hope will patina over time. And there's a small reveal all the way around the perimeter of that copper. I glued and screwed the box together, and I used shell casings from a 380 to plug the uh, screw holes. So here the CNC is just kind of doing its thing in this sequence. It's actually cutting the uh, dados for those larger compartments. And this is the other side of the box, just cutting a pocket for uh, the magazine. I used oak for this box, and when I CNC'd these top and bottom pieces, they were oversized. So here I'm just cutting them down to the proper length. I have a stop block set up, so when I cut the other side, it'll be exactly the same. And finally, just square everything up on these top and bottom pieces and get both of them cut to the proper width. Now I'll go ahead and cut out the rest of the parts for the box. These will eventually be the side pieces. And go ahead and cut them to the proper width on the table saw and get ready to move on to the next step. The outside pieces of the box actually have dados cut into the top and bottom. The pieces we just made on the CNC machine actually slip into those dados as the shell of the box is constructed. And the dado also provides about an eighth of an inch reveal for the face of the box. On these long pieces I don't want the dado to blow out the end because that, that end grain is actually exposed on the box. So I have some marks on the router table that kind of give me an idea of where to start and stop this cut and right there you can see those pockets. I'm using a 3 8 inch Forstner bit to open up some holes to conceal the screws that are used to build the shell of this box. I'm not going all the way through, just deep enough to kind of conceal that screw. These holes eventually get plugged with the shell casings. I have all the parts laid out, getting ready to do this final assembly. I'm going to put glue on all these dados and then just start working the, the pieces together, kind of like a puzzle. Now some of these joints were really tight and I had to take a mallet and kind of work with it a little bit. It wasn't because the dados were too small, it's because right there you can see there's a little bit of a warp in that board. So I just was real careful and I worked it in really slow. Here you'll be able to see why I stopped those dados a little bit short on those end pieces. I wouldn't have wanted those dados to be blown all the way out that end grain where you'd see them. And here you'll be able to see how all those dados connect internally there as I get ready to put this piece in here and just tap it down and work with it a little bit. As I continued to work the pieces in, sometimes they would uh, want to kind of come apart, like right there. Just had to be careful and take my time and just, just keep working them into place. And at this point, I'm ready to put on the last piece. Put the glue on it and just go ahead and work that last side piece on. And there we are. I go ahead and drill pilot holes where the screws will go. And the Forstner bit will dimple the center of that hole and it will help you to locate exactly where to drill. And then go ahead and just run screws into those holes. I don't torque it down real tight. I just cinch it up snug. And as I do this, the box begins to you know, get really strong and, and sturdy at this point. So I feel really good about it. I go ahead and check the box for square, mostly for kicks at this point, because if it were out of square, there wouldn't be anything I could do about it. But it turned out to be right on. This is the fun part where I actually get to cut the box apart and see what I end up with. I just go slow, take my time. This is a really critical cut. I don't want to mess it up. Oftentimes, I'll, I'll kind of rehearse these cuts in my mind before I ever actually do it. And there's what I end up with, and it turned out really good. I set the table saw up to cut the slots for the hinges 
and I use a series of stop blocks. You can see one on the fence there. That's to keep me from pushing the workpiece too far. And then along the, uh, I guess you call it the rail of the fence, I have stop blocks set up so I know exactly where to start and where to stop. And in the end, I end up with a really nice hinge pocket that's snug and everything seats really nice in it. I cut down several of those 380 shell casings to about the depth of those holes we drilled earlier and I'll use those to plug those holes and conceal the screws. I put a little glue, seems like I use CA glue for this, and I put some glue in each of those holes and just gently tap those shell casings in. And I think this adds a really, really nice detail to the box. I think it kind of pulls everything together as far as the theme of the look that I'm going for. Earlier in the project, I'd cut dados into these small parts so that everything would fit together like a puzzle as I build these compartments. And here I'm just using rapid fuse to glue everything together. This part of the hinge installation is pretty straightforward. I just go ahead and seat the hinge in the pocket we cut earlier. And I use a self-centering drill bit to drill pilot holes and just go ahead and screw those hinges down. This is kind of a foolproof method of completing this hinge installation. I'm mixing up some five minute epoxy and once I get that mixed up I'm going to just put a little dab on each of the hinges right there. And then I'm going to take the uh, top of the box and lay it in place and get it you know, lined up where I'm feeling good about it and just let it sit until that epoxy sets up. At this point the epoxy is strong enough to hold everything in place long enough for me to uh, get the screws and the hinges. So I gently open the lid and drill the pilot holes and start running in the screws. If you're careful you really can't go wrong using this technique and I really haven't found any other way to accurately install the hinges on a box like this. Putting the latches on are pretty straightforward. I actually used a piece of double sided tape to hold that lower part of the latch in place long enough to drill pilot holes so I could run the screws in. So there's the box for the gentleman's survival kit. Like I said it's a little unconventional how I built this and the parts that don't conform to fine woodworking are hidden. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did I hope you'll give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.